Hello, welcome back to my channel. I have ice in my mouth. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a very simple dish. A dish that I grew up with in the island of Barbados. Haven't made it in a long time, but I'm at home with plenty of time on my hands. So I'm making this dish. And hopefully you can make it too. This is a, uh, a dish that has lots of ground provisions. We have here some breadfruit, some potatoes, some green bananas, and I'll show you later what I'm going to do with that. But what I'm going to make for gravy today is codfish, salted codfish. A lot of you may not have heard of this before, but it's salted codfish and car oh, so salted codfish. I don't know why I keep messing up that name. In Spanish, it's called bacalao. But today, I'm going to make some salted cod codfish. And what I have to do with this is, before I can cook this, it has a lot of salt. It's very salted. So before I can cook it, I have to either soak it or boil it to get the salt out of it. I think I'm going to boil it because to soak it, it's going to take a very long time to soak. I would have had to have done it since earlier today and I didn't. So I am going to boil it and once I boil it and uh, um, I get the salt out, I'll, I'll come back to you and show you what's the next step for that. So now I'm going to show you my next step. My next step is going to be peeling this stuff. Okay. This is, if you ask anyone in Barbados, what are you cooking? And they're cooking this, they're totally cooking stew food. S-T-E-W, food, stew food or the cooking ground provision so if they say oh i'm cooking stew food i'm cooking ground provision you know this is what they're cooking okay i grew up in the islands we didn't have a lot of money when i was i was growing up but we never went hungry because there was always something that you can go and pick something like this and you can cook you always have something to eat so people are going crazy right now in the supermarket and emptying out the shop you don't need to do that. You don't need all that can stuff. Get a good bag of flour. Get some ground provisions. And you, you're going to be able to find something to get something to cook. So what I'm going to do right now is. This is a butternut squash. Of course I don't need this whole butternut squash. So I'm going to cut. A, I'm going to cut a piece of it off. And then you know how big your family is so you know whether you need a whole one or a half I just need that little piece so I'm gonna cut this off and cut this tip off the thing about butternut squash is that it um, cooks very quick this if you are not an island person you may not know what this is this is called breadfruit you can find these on trees in the islands and um, if you don't have anything to cook, you go get a breadfruit. You can do all kind of stuff with this. Make this into flour. Make pies with this. You fry this. You roast this. You do whatever. So you're not going to go hungry. Okay? So you might not have a breadfruit tree in the island, but somebody do. And they'll give you a breadfruit. Because people just give you stuff. Because they're just going to be on a tree and then they're going to fall off the tree. So once again, this is what it looks like on the inside. It's called breadfruit. I'm not going to cook the whole thing. It's too much. So I'm just going to use half of it. And of course, you may know what this is. This is a sweet potato. It's white on the inside. This is what it looks like, a sweet potato. And this, everybody knows this. One of those big potatoes. Everybody know what that is. And I'm also going to cook two green bananas. I'm cooking for two people. This is still a lot of food right here. So some of this is probably going to end up being served tomorrow for tomorrow's meal. So this is two days meal I'm cooking because we're not going to eat all of this. So for the green banana, I don't take the skin off. I just, I just cook the tip off. I'm going to wash them and I eat them just like that. I mean, I, not I eat them just like that, but I'm going to boil them just like this. And then when you're ready to eat it, you just peel the skin off. Okay. And you're going to eat the green bananas have, is very high in protein. So, so we're going to have that. I'm going to peel my potatoes. 
and the breadfruit. It could always eat the breadfruit in another day because I like breadfruit. You just cut it down in half like that. And this part inside the call the heart, you're not going to eat that. So you're just going to cut that out and get rid of that. You don't need that. And here, see, I've finished peeling this other part over here in a few minutes, but I just want you to get an idea to see what that looks like. So now I'm going to wash this as soon as I finish that part and put it on the pot. So I'll be right back. I have here a steamer. Water's to the bottom. So the water's not here on top here. I'm just gonna put these in here. This is this part is old. I had this for years. This steams my vegetables very good, so why change it? Okay. So I don't put salt or anything to my vegetables because I just as I said I put it in a steamer right here and the heat the heat from there is gonna steam it and cook it. Now over here my salt fish as you can see is boiling so I'm gonna pour this water Okay. Washing my hands again because you gotta wash, 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 and keep those hands clean when you're cooking. You have to be constantly washing your hands. But this is my salt fish that I just boiled. I just took the center bone from in there. This is the bone because the thing about salt fish is it has it's fish, so it have bones in it. So this part you don't want. So you just take all that off because we definitely don't want this. Let me get a knife because it's, it comes out much easier with a knife to scrape it off much easier. So and you just go like that and scrape off. That's like the skin. We don't want that. And here at the side is pieces of bone. So I'm going to take all that off because you don't want people eating bone. This bone while they um Okay, I think I got it. And you can taste a piece of it. I taste a piece of this from the tick section. And the reason I do this is to see if all the salt come out. Because you were here to boil this and then start cooking it and realize, oops, you have a lot of salt, you can't eat it. So you take a from the thick part, you take a piece of it. It's good. It still has a little bit of salt, but not a lot of salt. So it's right now it's good. So I'm just going to do this to it and break it up small pieces like that. And then I have another piece right here with the bone. So let me just take this off and scrape that off. definitely don't want that skin and here we have some bone and then just see all oh, this is bone right here so I drop that piece over I still got a couple pieces of bone right here and then you just break this up and then as you're breaking it up like this you can kind of feel and you can tell if there's more bone in there because you'll feel it. In between your fingers, you'll feel for bone because you certainly don't want to get. See, look, I feel a piece here, piece of bone. As soon as the bone is so small, you have to make sure you get all of it out because you don't want it to get caught in your, in your throat. But it's also, if you're afraid of the bone, they also sell it boneless too. So you can buy it boneless and you don't have to worry about doing that. So this is what it looks like when I'm finished. But before I do that, I'm going to rinse my hand. The fish is cooked, the potatoes and so on is cooked. So I'm going to make what we call a gravy. So I'm going to show you how to make gravy. Now first you need 
a good big onion. I love onions, so I cook with a lot of onions. I know some people are allergic to onions, or some people just don't like the taste of onion. I don't know how no one could not like onion, but I cook with a lot of onion because it flavors the food really well. You wash your onion, and then we're gonna cut our onion up. But I cut it this way. This is how I cut the onion. Okay, after I cut up the onion, I'm gonna put the onion in a pan that I have over here. Do some olive oil. And I just put my onions in here and I pour some olive oil in here. My stove is on, so I'm just gonna give that a few minutes to just saute in there. And then I'm gonna add some garlic in there and my other stuff. But I just want that to saute a little bit first. Now I'm gonna um, add some garlic. I'm going to add some garlic to the pan after the onions have sauteed for a little bit. I'm going to add the reason I press down on the garlic like that is because when you do that the shell comes off a little bit easier when you press down on it like that. So my garlic is washed so now I'm going to chop this up. Garlic gives the food also a good flavor and garlic is also very good for you. Guys, cook your own food at home. You're home. You're not working anymore. You're stuck in the house. Don't order in food. Just cook your food so you know what's in your food. Get your family good, healthy food. Okay? So now I'm going to put this garlic with the onion. Remember the fish that I cooked and um, now all the bones are out so I'm going to take this fish and I'm going to add it to the onions and the garlic. A pepper, a red pepper and I'm going to add um, tomato. So let me just go ahead and cut up my pepper. And I would add this to that. I think this is about it. I don't really need to add anything else to it in the line of vegetables. I think this is about good. And I have a tomato here. saute this for a little bit like grind this up for a little bit that's as good as there and I'm gonna add this stuff to it let's kind of cook down for a little bit and then I'm going to add here some black pepper. Add a little turmeric to that. I'm gonna add, this is seasoning salt. Oh, that's side is, come on. A little bit of seasoning salt, just to give it a little bit of flavor. Add some ketchup. Add some uh, good old Belgian hot sauce. Can't cook unless you got hot sauce, guys. This is the real thing all the way from Barbados. Just a little bit because it's hot. This is burning in two places. Okay, so now 
you stir. And basically this is it. I'm going to add a little I'm going to add some water. I think I added just a little bit more water. And I'm just going to let this stay here for a few minutes and come to a boil and cook all the onion and tomatoes and peppers and stuff in there. And then I'll taste it and see if I need to add anything else to it. But this is what we call um, gravy. Salt fish gravy. Or codfish gravy. But however you call it, it's the same thing. Put a plate over there and let that come to a boil. In the meantime, in the saucepan here, guys, you have the potatoes that I cooked earlier. You have the breadfruit and the green banana. This is what it looked like. You see it split. It's split right there. And you have the sweet pep, the sweet potato, and the butternut squash. So I served this up in a little while. As soon as um, my gravy over here is boiled, I would serve that up. And you'll get to see. What that looks like. Unfortunately, you're not gonna get able to get a taste it. I wish y'all could taste it, you know. But um, you get to see. So let's just leave that there for a while, and then I'll, I'll put a cover on it and just let it boil. Now, guys, I just tasted this, and it need a little bit of salt. So I'm just gonna add a little salt to it. I know I told you earlier, you don't have to add salt, but when you're cooking salt fish just um you may or may not have to add salt so i guess this is what i would say this depends on how much salt you've boiled out so it seemed that i boiled out all the salt out of it so it needs a little salt so i just added a little salt so now i'm going to taste it again to see if i need to add more because you're just going to sprinkle a little bit a little bit and you're going to taste it to make sure you don't add too much you add a little bit and then you can add a little bit more but you don't want to so now I'm gonna taste I need a little more salt oh and I think this is good enough I'm not gonna add any more and that's it voila you have this is your salt fish gravy guys onions peppers tomatoes let's see what I have in here some garlic and salt fish and that's my salt fish gravy and this is my potatoes so now I'm gonna plate this I'm gonna plate that to show you let me get a fork So now, this is what I'm going to do guys. I'm going to put one of my green bananas, as you can see on here, the skin, and as you eat it, you can just take it off. I find that if you take the skin off first, the banana gets hard, so I just, is moist, I just leave my skin on, and then you can just kind of, you know, take the skin off. Um, one piece of potato, one piece of breadfruit, and let me slice. The potato I cooked it a little soft is falling apart. It is falling apart, but I like it like that. This is the sweet potato, and this one here. is we call the English potato right so you have two sets of potatoes here. 
This is a potato here that's sweet, and this one is not sweet. That's the English potato. You got your breadfruit, you got your green banana, and you got your butternut squash. And that's enough. And then what you do is you take your gravy like that, and you go all over like that. And you like a lot of gravy. I like a lot of gravy because then you know you put your potatoes and stuff in the gravy. Like that. Thank you so much for joining me today in this video. I hope you get to make this. It's very simple, it's very easy. You are at home, you have plenty of time on your hands, so go ahead and make some salt fish gravy and make some sweet potatoes. I mean, if you don't want, if you don't like potatoes, cook some rice, quinoa, whatever you want to go do, make to go with the gravy. It tastes just as good. Until next time, thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.